hello, everyone, and welcome to Refuge Church Online. Uh, we're so glad that you've chosen to join us today. We pray you feel God's love, you hear God's voice, and that your faith is encouraged. Uh, today, we continue a series of messages entitled Afterlife. As I've said, when I refer to afterlife, I'm referring to life after this life, life after death. And so far, the past two weeks, we've looked at why it's so important that we live with eternity in mind. But today, let's talk about heaven. Let's talk about heaven. You know, growing up, I was blessed to have all of my grandparents in my life for a very long time. Uh, only my grandmother, Crosby, on my dad's side, is, is still living now. I actually helped officiate the eternal homegoing services of all three of my grandparents in some form or, or fashion. But I'll never forget my last visit with my, with my granddad, Johnny Fralix. This visit took place just a week before I helped preach his funeral. Granddad loved to hear me sing songs, especially the old hymns. So on that day, I proceeded to sing some of his favorites, like Amazing Grace and uh, How Great Thou Art, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. But, but this time, it was different. Anytime I would start singing the normal hymns to him, if it was not completely about heaven, my granddad would do this. He was like, hey, cut it out. And by the way, my granddad was, was, was not communicating uh, verbally at that time. He had been suffering from a, a stroke and other things, but he understood things. And, and he didn't want to hear anything except, hey, tell me about heaven. You see, his suffering was so great, this side of heaven at a, with his 87-year-old body and his heart was so broken because just a couple of weeks before his, his wife of many, many years had passed away, he was ready to leave this temporary struggling place called planet Earth and move on to this incredible place he had heard for so long about called heaven. Why? Because he knew in heaven the best was yet to come. Today's message, it may not answer every question that you have about heaven, but I can promise you this, it will give you a glimpse of what heaven might be like when God's word reveals certain things about it. So today I'm going to share with you seven things about heaven. I want to share with you seven things about heaven. The first thing is this, heaven is a real place created by God. Heaven, it is a real place created by God. To know that heaven is for real, all you need to do is open up the Word of God. You don't, you don't need to rely on somebody else's near-death experiences, dreams, or, 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 or psychic powers. You simply need to open up the greatest book ever written, the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E stands for Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. It tells us right out of the gate in Genesis chapter 1, 1 that heaven is real. Genesis 1, 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before God even created us, he created the heavens. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 2 says, So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God finished his work of creation, so he rested from all of his work. I think we need to remember that, that, that there's a time for work, but there's also a time to rest. Even God rested. And, and by the way, uh, just a thought that has come to me, uh, from a quote that I read by Michael Bliss. Think about this. If God created heaven and earth in just six days, why can't he change you or me in one day? Listen, heaven is a real place created by an all-loving, all-powerful, all-knowing, completely amazing God. But secondly, you need to know this. Heaven is a Christian's forever home. Heaven is a Christian's forever home. This world is not our eternal dwelling place. It's only our temporary residence. One day, our time of death will come. Our souls, which is our very being, will transition from this world to the next world. Our souls will live eternally somewhere. The Bible says, for the unbeliever in Jesus Christ, your eternal home will be in hell. For the believer in Jesus Christ, your eternal home will be in heaven. There will be no more wonder of where you might be or where you might go. You will be with Jesus in heaven forever if Jesus Christ is your Savior. 
and your Lord. The apostle Paul said this about our heavenly citizenship. He says in Philippians chapter three, verse 17 through 21, he says, dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes. Listen to this. He says, there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They, they brag about shameful things, and they only think about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Listen to this. As believers in Christ, we are strangers in a foreign land. We're just passing through this temporary life to our eternal life where our citizenship is. Listen, the reason this evil world unsettles us so much is because every true believer in Jesus Christ can know that they are heaven bound and we may live here, but we know that this is not our forever home. Thank God this is not the end. The best is yet to come. Second Corinthians 5, 1 says, for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built, by human hands. Listen, heaven is real, and heaven awaits all who give their hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. It will be our eternal home. But thirdly, you need to see this. Heaven is a unimaginable, perfect place. Heaven is an unimaginable, perfect place. As the popular song says, I can only imagine what it will be like. Listen, we, I could not describe anything so glorious in its entirety. When it comes to heaven, we can only imagine, but the scriptures keep painting a picture of what we can imagine. Billy Graham once said this. He said, even when we allow our imaginations to run wild on the joys of heaven, we find that our minds are incapable of conceiving what it will be like. I've read the following verse that I'm getting ready to read to you a thousand times. I continue to hold on to his hopeful truth deep in my heart. It does not tell us what heaven will look like, but what heaven will be like. Revelation 21.4 says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things will be gone forever. Listen, heaven is not any place It is an unimaginable, perfect place, a place where there's no more addiction, no more tears, no more fears, no more goodbyes, no more broken relationships, no more sin, no more struggle, no more suffering, a place that is absolute heaven, a forever utopia. Trust me, you want to make sure that you will be there. Heaven is a perfect place, and it is some place we can look forward to with great hope. But fourthly, heaven It is a nonstop worship experience. Notice I did not say a worship event. It is a worship experience. It's not something you'll be looking at from the sidelines, but all will be engaged in worship. Listen, you need to learn how to worship God this side of heaven because in heaven, every second will be spent doing just that. Heaven will be a nonstop worship service. The kind that that you don't dread, but the kind where everyone is simply consumed and captivated by God's love, grace, and greatness. Revelation is a book that reveals to us things that are still to come, and it reveals that this is what we can expect in heaven. Look at Revelation 5, 9 through 13. It says, and they sang a new song with these words, you are worthy to take the scroll and, and break his seals and open it. For you were slaughtered, and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. By the way, this reminds us that in heaven, it will not matter what your background is, what your skin color is, what country you grew up in. There will be people there from every tribe and every nation who all have one thing in common, and that is a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
Verse 10 says, And you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked again, and I heard the voices of thousands and millions of angels around the throne of the living beings and the elders, and they sang in a mighty chorus, Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. They sang, blessing and honor and and glory and power belong to the one sitting on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever. And the four living beings said, amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped the lamb. Listen, when we see Jesus in heaven and when we fully realize all that he has graciously given us that we don't deserve, we will, we will simply be compelled to worship him like never before because our faith now will have sight of that faith. It won't just be hopeful thinking. It will be realized forever hope. Billy Graham says the most thrilling thing about heaven is that Jesus Christ will be there. Revelation 22, three through five says no longer will there be a curse upon anything. I want you to hear that. It says in heaven, there's no longer will there be a curse upon anything for the throne of God and the lamb of God will be there and his servants will worship him and they will see his face and his name will be written on their foreheads and there will be no night there, no need for lamps or sun for the Lord God will shine on them and they will reign forever and ever. Listen, in heaven, there'll be no more physical, mental, or emotional darkness because everything will forever be perfect. Louis Giglio says, he says, heaven will be full of the songs of worshipers who had once been broken people in a broken world, picked up and used for God's glory. Heaven will be the biggest, greatest, continuous, forever worship service that you've ever can imagine. The music will be led by angels, and there will be amazing. The people will be of absolute one heart, one mind. There will not be any political contrast. There will not be any fights within. Jesus, he will take center stage. Everyone will be shouting from the bottom of their hearts, worthy, worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain for me. You know, I think the reason amazing grace How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me touches hearts so deeply because you realize that it was you that Christ died for on that cross. You realize that it is you that he is giving eternal life to even though you don't deserve it. Listen, the worship will go on and on and on. No one will get tired of it. No one will be ready to go to lunch because their stomachs and their hearts, they will forever stay full, content, at peace. Number five. Heaven is a display of indescribable beauty. Heaven is a display of indescribable beauty. The Bible tells us that God's creation and the beauty of that and the grandeur of that, it speaks for itself. When we see the moon, the sun, the stars, the oceans deep and the the mountains high, there are no words necessary to see God's goodness and to see his greatness. But what we see in heaven will be even greater. Psalm 19.1 says, the heavens, they declare the glory of God. Listen, compared to the greatest breathtaking sights that you've ever seen this side of heaven, heaven will reveal a beauty that makes those look like trash. Heaven is a place of beauty that man can't begin to describe or fully imagine, but here is a passage that sheds just a little light on this indescribable beauty. Look at Revelation 21, starting with verse 9. It says, Then one of the seven angels, they said to me, Come with me, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and sparkled like a precious stone, like jasper, as clear as crystal. The city wall was broad and high with 12 gates guarded by 12 angels. And the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on the gates. There were three gates on each side, east, north, south, and west. 
The wall of the city had 12 foundation stones, and on them were written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Verse 15 says, The angel who talked to me held in his hand a gold measuring stick to measure the city, its gates, its walls. When he measured it, he found it was, was a square as wide as it was long. In fact, its length and its width and its height were each 1,400 miles. Then he measured the walls and found them to be 216 feet thick, according to the human standard used by the angel. And then verse 18, it begins to, to show us all the colors and sights that you'll see in heaven. It says, the wall was made of jasper, and the city was pure gold, as clear as glass. The wall of the city was built on foundation stones and laid with 12 precious stones. The first was jasper, the second, sapphire, the third, a gate, the fourth, emerald, the fifth, onyx, the sixth, carnelian, the seventh, crystallite, the eighth, burial, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, chrysophrase, the eleventh, jacinth, the twelfth, amethyst. The twelve gates were made of per pearls, each gate from a single pearl. And listen to this, and it says, the main street was pure gold, as clear as glass. Verse 22 says, I saw no temple in the city for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are his temple. And the city had no need of sun or moon for the glory of God illuminates the city and the Lamb is its light. The nations will walk in its light and the kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed. And at the end of the day, because there is no night there, and all the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city. Listen, heaven will have a, a beauty way beyond our greatest imagination. There will be streets of gold. There will be pearly gates. There will be walls made of all precious jewels. And the entire place, it will be illuminated by the glory of God. But number six, you need to hear this. Heaven is a place with room for everyone. Heaven is a place with room for everyone. I want you to understand God loves you. God wants a relationship with you. And God extends an invitation to you. God sent Jesus in hopes that everyone would believe in him so that they could go to heaven. Therefore, he made sure that heaven has enough rooms for everyone who chooses to believe. Look at John 14 verses 1 through 3. Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me wherever I am. Now, not everyone will go to heaven, but as long as you're still breathing, you have this opportunity before you and there is still room waiting for you. I remember years ago singing a hymn that, that spoke deeply to my heart. It's written by a man named Bill Gaines. Part of it said, there's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. I want you to hear this. God loves you. God sent his son Jesus to die for your sins on a cross so that you could have forgiveness and so that you could have the promise of eternal life in heaven. Which brings me to this last but most important point. Number seven, heaven is a place for believers in Jesus only. Heaven is a place for believers in Jesus only. There are some myths that we need to put to rest. Like this, for instance, all religions and all faith does not lead to heaven. The only thing that leads us to heaven and the only way we get to heaven is through Jesus Christ alone. Many think trying to be good. You know, people say, hey, you know what? I think I'm a good person. I try to treat my neighbor like I would want to be treated and, and I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that. But listen, the Bible says it's only by grace through faith in Christ alone. There will be no one in heaven that is there because they deserved it. We will simply be sinners saved by grace. Listen, nothing other than believing in Jesus will get anyone in to heaven. Look at John 14, 4 through 6, as, as Jesus continues what we shared just earlier. Jesus goes on to say, he says, and you know the way to where I'm going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. 
We have no idea where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus told him, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Listen, there will be no one that makes it to heaven except through Jesus Christ. John 3, 16, it tells us some good news, but it also demands a response. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Listen, God loves everybody, and he sent his son for everybody. But then it goes on to say, whoever believes in him, will not perish, but have eternal life. You have to place your faith and trust in Jesus, believing in his death, burial, and resurrection for the forgiveness of your sin and the promise of eternal life. Revelation 21, 27 says, nothing evil will be allowed to enter heaven, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. I ask you today, is your name written in the book of life? Have you had a moment in time that you can remember, whether way in the past or or in recent days, that you truly, with your heart, trusted Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? Because if you've not done so, you are hell-bound. But if you have done so, you are heaven-bound. Whether you believe it or not, there is only one way to make reservations in heaven and that is through God's one and only Son, Jesus. Matthew 7, verses 13 through 14, Jesus says, You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. Listen, many people choose to go whatever that way they want, but many people are in for a rude awakening. It goes on to say, But the gateway to life is very narrow, And the road is difficult and only few ever find it. Verse 21 says, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. You must, in your heart, genuinely believe in Jesus Christ, that he was God's son, born of a virgin, that he died on that cross for your sins, and that through him you can be forgiven. And because of his resurrection from the grave, you too can overcome the grave and have the promise of eternal life. Listen, the most important relationship you will ever have and that you need to make sure is secure is your relationship with Jesus Christ. It is the most important this side of heaven, and it is certainly the most important in eternity. Only if you put your faith in Jesus can you know that you're going to heaven, that one day you'll be in heaven and that God will work everything out together for his glory, even the things we don't understand now. Listen, by faith in Christ, he is working them out. Tim Keller once said, he said, the Christian promise is not that every chapter in history will be better than the first, but that in the end, all things will work together for good. God will eventually bring us not to a disembodied afterlife, but a renewed material universe with resurrected bodies. I would like to close with this this message, reading just a few words written by Max Lucata in his book, Heaven, God's highest hope. I want you to hear this with me. I want you to receive this. Max Lucata, he says, finally, the moment. Can you envision it? Heaven, we're about to enter his presence. We don't deserve it. We haven't earned it. We may even surprise the angels. Angels are are making the music. The music is like none we've ever heard. Suddenly, silence. Now light blinding light as the maestro steps into view. Soon we will walk with him, talk with him, and worship as he leads. Soon God, the the author of life and the composer of hope, will speak our name, a name so mysterious and, and full of promise that only he knows it. It's our name. It's a new name, a name totally our own to be ours alone for all the days we spend in heaven. Our highest hope It's the end of the journey. It's the beginning of eternal life. It is the moment that you don't want to miss. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who you sent to die on a cross. Lord, so that we could be forgiven of sin, 
and so that we could have the promise of eternal life. I pray that all that are listening right now, Lord, would put their faith and trust in you, Jesus, in your death, burial, and resurrection. Lord, knowing that anyone who believes in the Son of God will be saved. Lord, may we make you not only our Savior, but the Lord of our life. God, I pray, Lord, right now for anyone that might have things going on in their life, God, that you just need to help them through. Lord, they just need to be able to see, Lord, that there's always hope with you, Lord, and that, that in Christ, Lord, the best is yet to come. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. If this message has encouraged you in any form or fashion, I, I pray that you'll share that out with, with someone else. Uh, as always, I want to thank all of our ministry partners uh, all over, uh, some of you in different states even. We thank you for believing in this vision. We thank you for seeking to live out this vision, and we thank you for continuing to support this vision. If you would like to help us keep moving forward as we continue to seek to love, lift, and lead people to Jesus, we would greatly appreciate your financial support. If you'd like to give a tax-deductible gift, you can do so to, to support this ministry. Just go to Refuge Church dot org slash giving or simply text the word give that's g-i-v to eight four three eight zero six zero eight three one or mail a check make that out to refuge church send it to 203 eddie chastain drive walterboro south carolina two nine four eight eight now, for those of you who've just kind of been waiting to see when we might gather back, I know it's been quite a while. Um, we are going to have our first, if you want to say, corporate event and community event outside. I want you to mark your calendars now on August 30th, 6.30 p.m. here in Walterboro at the Ivanhoe Shopping Center. We are going to have what we're calling a back-to-school community prayer event. We will be praying for students, teachers, and families everywhere. Everybody will gather. We will have that entire parking space just filled. We've gotten permission from every business. We'll have it filled with cars only, people in cars only. The music, the message, and the prayer, it will take place from the top of the steps of the Ivanhoe Cinemas. Um, we will use a FM transmitter to carry the sound uh, from there to your radio. We'll give you that radio station as, as time gets closer. But we believe God is going to do great things as we gather back for the first time uh, since March 15th. Uh, it's hard to believe that. So you mark your calendars. Uh, keep looking on our, our refuge page or our, our website for more information about that event, August 30th, 6.30 p.m. That's a Sunday at the Ivanhoe Shopping Center. Well, today we pray that you uh, have a great, great week, and we hope that you and your family are blessed. God bless.